How's it hanging everybody? So today we got to talk about this Nintendo Direct that just wrapped up. Today is February 9th, 2022. And are you going to see this video? Does it make sense for me to record these Nintendo Direct Direct reactions? Probably not because I'm not a big enough channel. I don't have enough of that algorithmic love to really <laughs> compete with all, all of the other, like everyone and their dog is making a reaction to this direct right now. And so I know that no one's gonna see it, but I just have to get on here anyway and talk about it because holy cow, this was like the mother direct, not like the earthbound mother direct, but it was like the monster direct. Not like monster hunter, but you know, it's just like, just like the, it was like the big mother load direct of all directs. I don't remember seeing a direct that was this good, moment to moment, start to finish, announcement to announcement. Um, and you know, somehow there was still no big bombshell announcements with this direct, but there was still so many high points. It was just like a slew of high points. And this to me is sort of like the no brainer direct because there's so many things here that Nintendo could have leaned into for many years, uh, and they're just now getting around to it for whatever reason. Um, but this Direct had, you know, obvious things like Mario Kart DLC, like Mario Strikers, a really cool Mario sports game, like the return of Wii Sports, like why wouldn't we have gotten that earlier? It just seems so obvious. Uh, but we're just gonna go through this, and I'm just gonna kind of skim through, you know? Uh, this first announcement is a very a very big announcement. I think it's a Fire Emblem Warriors game. Not as not exactly as big as a, a full on Fire Emblem game, but uh, still cool. You know the Warriors games are cool. It makes sense that they you know have something with that here. And then I'm just gonna go over here. Uh, let's see. Where's my mouse? We're just gonna kind of skip around. You know, I'm gonna skip forward some. That was a cool announcement. The Fire Fire Emblem. Let's see if we can get a little title screen there for that. Is it going to show us? I mean, it's, it's a good looking game. I think that this definitely, you know, it, it may be even better looking than like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, which I think that, you know, it definitely had performance issues, but just graphically, it looked quite good on the Switch. I mean, it rivaled Breath of the Wild, you know, so maybe this game can do the same. Um, I like that there's not so many blades of grass because those blades of grass, man, they are taxing on the Switch. So, looks like this might be a little more sensibly designed. Um, that's all I really have to say about that. You know, I'm not a big Fire Emblem fan, but I understand the scope and the scale of that announcement. It's it's a big one. Uh, now, next up. So you don't want to go too fast and miss stuff. We got No Man's Sky. I mean, this is an interesting announcement, right? Um, uh, you know, this kind of PC game that was, you know, started out really rough and then kind of won, you know, best improved game at some award show. And then now it's like a really serviceable kind of service model -y type of game about space exploration. And you've got all of these uh, randomly generated environments that you can check out. Uh, it's a cool, cool thing there. I'm happy to see that on the Switch. Am I gonna play it? Probably not. Now we got Mario Strikers moving right along. Another really big announcement. I almost couldn't believe it when I saw this announcement right after, you know, the, the Fire Emblem one. But yeah, we got a really cool looking Mario. This is probably the coolest looking Mario sports game I think I've ever seen. Really exceptionally fun looking, uh, super clean. I know we're looking at like trailers right now, but I, I'm just, I feel like there's no way this game's not a blast. So I, I pre-ordered it. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm making it rain on Nintendo today as I often do. But uh, yeah, uh, just, just makes a lot of sense here. You know, Mario Strikers, I mean, soccer is a big international sport. Uh, Mario Strikers is a great looking game. The original was on the Wii. And so this just makes all kinds of sense. Um, so props to Nintendo for for giving us this. Let's move along. Uh, let's get like, uh, let's get the, the title shot here. Battle League Mario Strikers coming out this summer. Uh, cool stuff. What else? Okay, so we got some splatty action here, some Splatoon 3. I've never played Splatoon. I'm not sure I'll ever play Splatoon, but again, uh, this is a huge game for many people. 
my Breath of the Wild might be your Splatoon 3, you know? So for many people, this is like one of the biggest Nintendo properties. This is like the, the, the game that they play every day. Uh, it's a really big deal, Splatoon 3, and of course we're getting to see more content here. I don't really know if I understand the significance of the content here, but uh, very cool to see. So Splatoon 3, can we get a little title shot? Uh, screw the title shots. Okay, this one, I don't remember what this one is, uh, which is maybe bad. <laughs> okay, front. Okay, front mission first. That is available this summer. The remake of Front Mission First, which I know nothing about. Oh, and we're getting Front Mission uh, 2 in the future. That's kind of cool. All right, next up, uh, we got a Disney racing game. I didn't know about this game. I didn't know this game was coming. Did you? I don't think it had been announced. I think this was the first announcement of it. Uh, so uh, pretty interesting, and it definitely looks like a pretty clean game on the Switch. Uh, definitely some like pretty enhanced visuals for this platform, I would say. Um, so, interesting there. Another big announcement, another crowd pleaser, so to speak. And now we've got some some Star Wars action. I can't remember if this Star Wars Force Unleashed is a. Um, I can't remember if it's a uh, older game or if it just looks like an older game. I think it's probably an older game. I don't know though. Maybe not. Maybe it's a new game. But you know, Star Wars game. So that's cool. Uh, what do we got here? I think I missed that. Let's go back for a second. This is a very casual uh, review, guys, so hopefully you kind of bear with me. Uh, Bandai Namco, SD Gundam Battle Alliance. I don't know too much about this. We're just going to skip on through. But again, that might be a huge game for you. Okay, so for me, I need to pause it for a second. Chrono Cross is what just got announced. A remastered version of Chrono Cross and we heard rumblings that this was coming and now here we have full confirmation of what this actually is this is not a remake of Chrono Cross this is a light remaster which is honestly exactly what I was hoping for this is one of two big bombshell cult classic JRPGs that were on this direct I can't believe we had both of them I can't believe we had mother earthbound and we had a Chrono game both together on the same like uh, Nintendo Direct. I mean, that's just crazy, right? Like Earthbound is probably for, Earthbound is, we're gonna get into Earthbound because they announced it later in the Direct, but Earthbound for me is like the number one bucket list game for me personally. And then Chrono Cross, another huge, huge bucket list game for me that I've never played. And I'm just so happy that we're getting it. It's called the Radical Dreamers edition of Chrono Cross. Um, uh, I, I'm i speechless. Now, of course, it's worth noting that this is a Nintendo Direct, but this coincided with the announcement of the game on other platforms. This game's coming everywhere, basically. It's coming to Xbox, PS4, Xbox One, PS4, and Steam. So we're getting it pretty much everywhere. I don't know if it's coming to mobile or not, but it would probably work on mobile. Um, Here's the thing for me about Chrono Cross. I've never played Chrono Cross, but I've played the introductory sequence of Chrono Cross about a billion million times because I love the aesthetic of this game so much. I love the visual style of this game. By the way, they mentioned the Satellaview game, Radical Dreamers. If you don't know, the, they actually said the word Satellaview on a Nintendo Direct. That just shows you how lit this direct actually got how deep they went so chrono cross the radical dreamers satellaview game was a and basically in the chrono series chrono trigger being the obvious like the big cult classic but chrono cross is still important uh but the satellaview game radical dreamers was like a, a sequel to both of those games somewhere in the timeline and it was a an, an text-based adventure game, and that is on here as well. Now, why they didn't just add Chrono Trigger into the mix and make it the Chrono Collection and sell it for $40 instead of $20, I'll never know. But that game is only $20, which I think is just a saintly move from Square Enix to, because you know, that's the kind of game the, like Chrono Cross, Chrono Cross is the kind of game where you really pull at the heartstrings of all the old people like myself. 
because we're the ones that remember that game. We're the ones that remember and have nostalgia for the series. So if you want, you know, we're going to be the ones buying it. We're all kind of the target audience. Um, and you could get us to pay $60 for that game. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. People would absolutely pay $60 for Chrono Cross because of what it is, because of what it represents, the, the, the series that it's from. And it's also just a very good game in its own right from what I understand. So we're going to find out because that is a game I will definitely be playing. I'm not sure if I'm going to be playing it on the Switch or maybe my Xbox. I don't know. We'll have to find out. I just need to know a little bit more about how it's going to perform on the Switch. I'm sure the performance will be good, but visually, I'd like it really clean. So if it, you know, it's probably going to look a little cleaner, crispier, a 4K Xbox Series X situation. Uh, okay, now we've got this Kirby game, uh, which looks fantastic. We got some more footage of the way Kirby is, the way he powers up, the different abilities that he gets, and. Um, it's it's just more of this really great looking Kirby game, this like Kirby Mario Odyssey style game, um, and that's called Kirby, the Forgotten Land. Is that what it's called? Kirby the Forgotten Land. Come on, come on, give us that title. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Okay, yeah, cool. Coming out in March, right around the corner. Chrono Cross is coming out in April. That's also right around the corner. Uh, and now we've got, this is like a, uh, uh, okay, I skipped over that completely. Um, I, I don't remember the name of it. It's like a baseball game. And it's, um, I, I think that it's, is this the first time it's been on the Switch? I think maybe this is the first time this game's been on the Switch. This game's kind of interesting because it's made by Sony. Uh, but instead of being an exclusive to the PlayStation, it's also on like Xbox Game Pass, which is really weird. Um, or you could pay full price for it on the Switch or the PS4 or 5. So, kind of weird stuff, but MLB The Show is what it's called. Next up, we've got Kingdom Hearts, uh, the cloud edition of this series. We knew this was coming. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this is received, how the cloud uh, stuff sort of works. Um, but this is, you know, a very beloved series. Of course, we had um, Sora in Smash. Um, so, yeah, this is a, a big deal, but we already knew about it, of course. Portal is coming to the Switch. Is this the first time Portal has ever been on console? I think it is. I wonder if Portal is coming also to the PlayStation and Xbox. I'm not sure. But it's coming to the Switch, and if you've never played Portal, wow, what a great opportunity to do so. This is a game that's going to look... Ugh, I'm sorry. This is a game that's going to just look really clean. It's just a very... It's got a simplistic art style, but it's very clean-looking game. Ugh, sorry, guys. I'm blowing up over here. Um, okay, so... Champ, camp, companion Collection. I wonder if that's going to include Portal 2. I think I, I think I may have missed that. A classic comes alive. This is Live Alive. Now, I've heard of this game, but I didn't know much about it. I think this is a Square Enix thing, and it's also a, an HD 2D thing. So these HD 2D games, man, you know, we're getting Dragon Quest 3. Of course, we've got Octopath. We've got um, Triangle Strategy, which is coming up. Another HD 2D game. And then it's just like, yeah, that's, that's just a winning art style, you know? And uh, I, I, I suspect we're going to just see more and more games remade this way, because why not? You know, Chrono Trigger HD 2D could be pretty cool. But I, I do have a little bit of... of I, I think these games look good. The HD 2D games look good. Squaresoft's, Square Enix's other efforts to make these kind of like old school looking games have usually been pretty bad. Let's face it. Um... Next up, so anyway, that, that's a cool looking game. That's like a $50 title. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some more research on Live Alive to see if it's something that I really want to get into. My JRPG bucket list is just billowing, and I don't know if this is one that I can cram in there, but we'll see. Uh, next up, Wii Sports, the return, the obvious return of Wii Sports. Um, it's it's just such a no-brainer like I said like 
this is a game that was so beloved on the Wii, it basically made the Wii. Some people, this was the only game they ever had on the Wii, and it makes so much sense to bring it over. Now, did you notice what I noticed about this game? Where are the Miis? Wii Sports introduced the Mii characters. This is the big, this is the, the most important representation of the Wii characters comes from Wii Sports. I think that's pretty, pretty non-controversial statement. Um, this version of, this is called Nintendo Switch Sports. I think they should have called it Mii Sports personally, but they, that's the thing is they didn't use Miis, but you can use Miis because we'll see here later that our friends from Nintendo Japan are, have, uh, they have the, the Wii characters. So I'm hoping you can just switch all the characters out with me style characters rather than having these super generic, like kind of anime style characters. They do not look good. I don't know what Nintendo was thinking with those character styles. They're very generic, they're very bland. They look like something that you would see on like, what, like everybody's golf or, um, <laughs> or just like a really cheap mobile game, service model type game it is kind of how they look. They just look very unimpressive, um, but it is cool that we have actual Miis there as well, so I guess all's forgiven there. So this is a $40 title, and I think that's very, I think that's very noteworthy uh, that they're making it $40, because with all the nostalgia for Mii Sports, it seems like, or for Wii Sports, they could easily price that up at 60, but I, I like the, the good faith gesture of making it a $40 title instead. Uh, so let's move along. Here we've got, I don't know if I remember the name of this. It's a rhythm game. And it is called, uh, it's Octopath Traveler. This one is called, uh, what's with these, uh, come on. Okay, so that's what that one's called. And uh, it looks fun, you know? I, I'm, I'm not gonna be messing around with it, but it looks fun. Rhythm game with 500 songs. I think they've even got the Legend of Zelda theme in there. So cool stuff. Uh, now we've got a bunch of uh, like quick list of all kinds of stuff. Triangle Strategy is here. We knew that one was coming. We got Cuphead DLC coming. I actually just downloaded the new Triangle Strategy demo because there is a new one. Metroid Dread, new modes. We got a boss rush mode coming in April. That's really cool. This gives me an excuse to talk about Metroid Dread because I just beat Metroid Dread like three days ago and it was a wonderful game. It's not my favorite, you know, Metroidvania style game of all time. I think I actually prefer it. Uh oh, uh, we don't want to get there yet. Uh, uh, Metroid Dread is like not my favorite Metroidvania style game. In fact, I think that I actually preferred Axiom Verge, which also came out last year, Axiom Verge 2. I actually enjoyed that game a little better. I just liked the exploration more. I liked the kind of ultimate or, you know, different dimensions and things that you would travel through. And the story had a lot of crazy, you know, multiverse themes and like um, sort of uh, what else? Like um, alternate reality themes. Uh, simulation like living in a simulation type themes it was a very very cool game conceptually and story wise and it was beautiful pixel art and it was just a, a great game and metroid dread is right behind it but i kind of liked axiom verge 2 better but metroid dread very well polished game you know it, it feels like the first like kind of triple a Me metroidvania game maybe other than ori ori might be the only other one that i can think of um but yeah, so Metroid Dread is getting a boss rush mode, and that's great because the bosses in Metroid Dread are really the star of the show, I think. Uh, I wish there were, I kind of wish there were more bosses. It seems like there were a lot of those soldier fights, if you know what I'm talking about, you, where you fight just like a little soldier-looking guy. Uh, and then, but the bigger bosses, I think, were much more interesting. There just weren't, there weren't too many of those, maybe five or six big bosses. Okay, and now this one is... is this one means something to me, okay? Guys, my number one bucket list game of all time is Earthbound. 
Not Mother 3, Mother 2, which is known as Earthbound here in the West. Earthbound, just suddenly today, I didn't know when I came home from work today, that Earthbound was just gonna be chilling on my Nintendo Switch, but it is. It's here, and I'm happy. I don't know why I had to wait five years, Nintendo, for this game to be on here. I mean, I, I, I'll take it, obviously. I'll take the game, gladly. Uh, I'm not giving you any awards for giving me a, a game that you could have given me in 2017 very easily. Uh, I have a lot to say about Nintendo's, uh, you know, harboring of games, especially essential titles like this one. I mean, this is definitively like an essential Nintendo title. Like, you gotta, like, this is, this is such an important game. And then we also get Earthbound Beginnings for the NES. Um, that one, I mean, maybe I'd like to play this one someday. I think, honestly, I would rather play one of the uh, mods of the game uh, because there are folks who have modded Earthbound Beginnings to be uh, to play more like a modern game where there's not so much grinding and things like that. So I think I might rather play that version. Um, but Earthbound is now on my Nintendo Switch and I can find... That's what I've been waiting for. And I had hoped that we would get some level of quality of life improvements. Maybe they would give us you know, maybe it wouldn't be on the Switch Online. Maybe it would be like a standalone, like App Store download with some cool quality of life features, maybe a fast forward mode. Uh, but we didn't get that. It's just regular vanilla ROM like the other ROMs on Switch Online. But I'm okay with that. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for for a long time is Earthbound on the Switch. I've never played Earthbound. And if we're being honest, I know that everyone was probably really angry that Mother 3 did not get revealed, that they're going to just like, you know, kind of salt bay sprinkle uh earthbound and earthbound beginnings on the switch online service without a lot of fanfare and then of course no mother three which everybody really wants uh including me i think that would be amazing but i mean the thing is have you played earthbound have you played mother two i haven't i don't think many of you have played it to be honest so this is now our chance to actually play this cult classic that everyone keeps talking about we can finally get it out of the bucket list and and play through it and it's here it's on my switch and that's exactly what's going to happen this game is going to get top priority probably starting next week i don't know if i can do it this week but next week um that's going to be what i'm playing uh next up uh we we skipped over something here what do we skip over oh yeah like some i think this is just a, a number of different games being announced here that one looks cool uh, I don't remember what it, uh, the, the one back here looks cool. I'm not sure what it is, but a lot of these games and the little highlight reel look good. And then we had the grand finale. Oh no, we have, um, not the grand finale yet, but we have Mario Kart DLC, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a Wii U game, DLC, because why not? It makes so much sense. It's Mario Kart. It sells like gangbusters. People were buying it all day. And it's like, it kind of just makes sense to like, give them some more value in that title that everyone picks up. Because you know, I, I feel like what a lot of people do is they pick up Mario Kart 8 because that's what everyone buys when they get the Switch. And then they realize like, oh, this is a little, this is not a very impressive title. This is like, doesn't have as many modes as I would like. The single player is very much lacking compared to something like Smash Bros. Uh, there's not as many tracks and courses as I would like. Um, this is a little flaccid. I don't know if I like this that much. And then now, you know, we're actually getting more content. It makes so much sense. Um, you know, it's it's basically either this or give us another Mario Kart game. And they decided to do this. And it, like I said, it just it's a it's a no brainer. This is the ultimate no brainer direct. Um, so let's move on. Uh, by the way, you get those those extra Mario Kart tracks if you subscribe to Switch Online Expansion Pass, which I do because uh, Nintendo is my goddess and my goddess drains me. I'm just kidding. I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, but here we have the grand finale, and it is a big deal, but I do think it's worth noting that Xenoblade Chronicles is not some, like, massive... Um, it's not some massive property, right? Xenoblade. It's it's cool. It's interesting. 
It has a very, very loyal fan base, and I'm sure these games are fantastic. I haven't played one. Um, I, I mentioned earlier in the in the video, my JRPG bucket list is just bursting at the seams. I don't, and you know, Xenoblade's not in it right now. None of the Xenoblade games are in my bucket list of JRPGs, but I mean, I, I feel like maybe I should put one in, I don't know. I mean, maybe this will be the one, maybe, oh, that looks really good, yeah. Yeah, they're really, uh, yeah, that's, you got some good visuals here for sure, for sure. So this is one of those reveals that's like, it's huge for sur for some people. For a few people, this is a massive uh, game. And you know, I'm not saying that Xenoblade is not a big deal. It's a big deal. But it's just obviously not like a Pokemon or a Breath of the Wild sequel or a Mario Odyssey sequel or something like that. It's not on that level. But it, it is, it, it, I, it, it's, it makes sense that we have another one of these games. Um, and again, kind of a no-brainer, like I've been saying, but let, let's just recount all the JRPGs. This was like the, the JRPG Ultimate Direct, because we got, let's see, let's, can I remember all of them? We got Live Alive, okay, for $50 HD 2D Remaster. We got Earthbound, we got Earthbound Beginnings, just randomly, not, not a lot of fanfare, but we have them now, crazy. We didn't have to pay for them in a collection, they're just on the Switch Online. Um, then we had uh, Fire Emblem, the Warriors game. We had Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We had Chrono Cross. Oh my God, Chrono Cross. Uh, so excited about that one. Only 20 bucks, amazing stuff. And I feel like I'm leaving one out. Am I leaving one out? So that's six big ones. I guess with Chrono Cross, we could actually count the Radical Dreamers uh, Satellaview game, adventure game, that's kind of a JRPG. So maybe you count that as seven. Dude, that's a lot of quality JRPGs here on this Nintendo Direct. We're talking like two of the biggest cult classic series, Chrono and Mother, both have representation. Four games total. Um, we have you know, uh, the New Guard, the Xenoblade, the Fire Emblem. I mean, the, both of those are, are classic series as well, but they kind of have more of a, an identity here in the West as part of the New Guard of RPGs, I think. Uh, do I have that right? Maybe I have that wrong. But anyways, guys, that's it for this Nintendo Direct. I just had to run my mouth a little while because I thought this was a really big deal and uh, it, it, probably the best Direct I've ever seen even without having a big bombshell announcement. They still, the pace was so good. They hit us with so many good announcements, just quality after quality after quality. And it was just the best paced Nintendo Direct I think we've ever seen. And maybe probably the best Nintendo Direct that I remember. I've seen just about every Direct in the Switch's life cycle. Probably every Direct in the Switch's life cycle, I'm almost sure. And that was, that was numero uno right there for me personally. So anyway, guys, if you happen to find this video, congratulations, you won the lottery because uh, the algorithm the algorithm's probably not gonna be too kind to me, but I, like I said, I just had to get on here and run my mouth. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take it easy.